Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, as you recall in the last episode, we fought uh, Udex Gundir. Uh, again, that means uh, judge and battle uh, from what I looked up. Uh, so I'm, I'm assuming that that's a judgment battle and we are being judged as, uh, as being worthy to uh, move on to the Firelink Shrine and uh, embed the coil sword into the... Uh, into the bonfire, uh, allowing us to warp. So, actually, before I go through the gates, I just want to point out, uh, I'm sure a lot of you already have seen uh, the environments. Uh, I am absolutely amazed. That's the fire sh Firelink Shrine back there, which we'll be going to. Uh, but I am absolutely amazed at the detail and environments in this game. I mean, this is just a beautiful, beautiful game. And almost if not all of what you see uh, with the exception of obviously the, the mountain ranges back there anywhere where you see actual uh, locations uh, are actual playable areas there everything's linked somehow to each other not just by warping but actually uh, you basically could just walk everywhere that you see locations like that and it's not pre-rendered or you know composited backgrounds or you know map painting or anything like that. It's it's actually part of the environment, which is absolutely amazing to me. Um, you know, I'm sure there are other games out there that are like that, uh, especially now that consoles and, and PCs and everything are getting more powerful and handle those kind of environments. But uh, the fact that it's all put together right off the bat, and it's not something that has to be loaded. I mean, you do have to load, you know, when you're warping, but you really can just go from one area to the next without without really having to load the game. Alright, so we've gone through the gate and we're heading into the uh, Firelink Shrine area here. Broken Straight Sword. Okay, so this is actually a weapon that you can use. Uh, scales rather poorly to uh, strength and uh, dexterity. Uh, not a very strong weapon. It is a broken straight sword. Um, it's uh, a straight sword with a broken blade, a weapon with no exceptional qualities. Only a mad hollow would choose to fight with this. Now, notice they, they point out a mad hollow, uh, and the hollows are the ones who they will be dropping these uh, frequently. Well, we are not a hollow, um, therefore we will not be using this. <laughs> um, the skill is a stance while in a stance. Use a normal attack to break a foe's guard from below, and a strong attack to slash upward with a forward lunge. Only, neither move will appear very impressive with a broken sword. So, uh, again, that's a, let's go ahead and um, equip that so we can go ahead and show it off. So, I'm going to switch to it here, go into two hand, and gonna go up like that and then follow with a heavy attack. That breaks the guard and then you can follow with a heavy attack. There we go. Um, not very useful with a uh, broken blade, obviously. You know, go ahead and uh, unequip that. Let's, uh, let's go down here first. Yeah. Oh, 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 that didn't work out so great. Um, I tend to be, there's some people who like to uh, not lock on to enemies. I do. Uh, it works better for me. <laughs> I don't like when I can't lock on to an enemy. Uh, the only problem sometimes, uh, depending on the boss or depending on where you are, is locking on if you're going to be like rolling around, uh, like something like this where it's really narrow. Um, you, you may kind of lose your sense of direction and uh, roll right off the edge. You, it's rarely ever happened uh, for me. Uh, I tend to kind of know my limitations when locked on. Um, so we picked up a homeward bone. Uh, many of you are going to be familiar with that. We will pull this up here. It's a bone fragment reduced to white ash. Return to the last bonfire used for resting or to the, the shrine bonfire. Uh, 
I don't remember if in Dark Souls One if it would if it would take you to the shrine bonfire as well. I thought it only took you to the last uh, bonfire that you rested at. Uh, but uh, at the very least, in this game, uh, you can go either either or. Uh, bonfires are sustained by bones of the undead. In rare cases, their previous owners' strong urge to seek bonfires enchants their bones with a homeward instinct, uh, thereby being a homeward bone. Uh, using it takes you back to uh, the bonfires in which they are sustained by. If that made any sense. <laughs> Kill you, and you, and you. Oh, 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 oh! Wow, and welcome to Dark Souls. No armor, getting attacked by two different guys, and an arrow. Alright, that was pretty bad. That really shouldn't have happened. Please don't judge me. Please don't judge me. I didn't mean for that to happen. I was just being overconfident. That's all right. We'll go back and get our. We'll go back and get our souls. Uh, these guys with the bows, or I guess uh, he's using a crossbow, they um got quite a bit of range. It's, it's actually ridiculous. Um, this guy's just enjoying the view here. So it's kind of like us earlier, taking in the view. But uh, sorry, we, uh, we can't let you live, so we're going to give you a little, a little push off the edge. Uh, now, you can kick in this game, but I've noticed with some weapons, it's a little harder to pull off a kick. Uh, and for some reason, with the club, it is. There, that, that was a kick. So, to do a kick, you're going to push forward on the left uh, joystick and uh, do a light attack with R1. You kind of have to push forward on the joystick first in order to pull off a kick. And uh, unfortunately, I did not, and I wanted it to be funny looking, and it just wasn't. Alright, um, let's see. I'm gonna grab let's, a couple things I wanna do here. Uh, first of all, uh, let's grab this east west shield here. Now, oh, when do you guys wake up? You're not supposed to be awake. You're supposed to be sleeping on the stairs. Okay. Uh, maybe it has. Man, I keep taking hits. Um, normally those guys are s sleeping at the top of these stairs here. Uh, what I wanted to point out is over here, uh, you might be able to see him standing at the top of the steps there, is uh, the uh, Swordmaster. And he's got the Uji Katana, which many of you are familiar with that weapon from uh, previous Souls. Um. I'm not going to try and take him on with a club and no armor, because he will fuck me up, and uh, I'm just not ready for that. Uh, he kinda, he's, he's up there with the uh, Crystal Lizard right now, and I really don't care about the Uchi Katana. Uh, I personally don't like that weapon that much. Uh, and we would have to also uh, scale to Dex in order to use it, and uh, I'm not working on a Dex build. Uh, we will eventually go and get it. Um, we will kill him uh, for a couple reasons. Uh, one, I do want to get the Uji Katana, just so uh, I can, uh, for anyone who hasn't seen that or seen the lore on that, uh, I do want to get that for you guys. Uh, but the other reason being that uh, when you kill the Swordmaster, he will actually be a phantom available to help you in a uh, boss battle later on. So, we will definitely go back Wake up the dog there. 
we will definitely go back and uh, kill him later on. One thing I want to point out right here, and obviously somebody left a note here, a uh, weapon ahead, which uh, that's not true. There is no weapon ahead here. Uh, this is a, uh, this is an Abyss Watcher sword here, or uh, uh, this is the, uh, the Farron, uh, the Farron Greatsword, I think it is, uh, or maybe the, uh, the Wolf Greatsword, uh, which we will come across later on in the game, but I wanted to point it out that there is a grave with this sword sitting here. Uh, and we will find out more about that later on. For now, let's kill Doggy. Bad dog. Now, I love dogs, but um, this is not a typical dog, so I don't feel too bad. Otherwise, I would feel bad. Now, if I was playing uh, Bloodborne, um, I might feel a little bad about it. Uh, but even then, the dogs are pretty rancid looking, so... Um, all right, let's see. So let's go ahead and uh, go in here, and just to take it in real quick, this is the uh, this is the Firelink Shrine. So really cool, really cool environment, really cool location. You have the uh, the thrones of the uh, Lords of Cinder all here. Um, there are four empty thrones, and you can see just above my head there. There's actually a little guy sitting in that throne. So that Lord of Cinder is. Is still here. He has not left his throne. And we'll talk to him in a second. First, let's talk Welcome to the bonfire and to the firekeeper. Fire. I'm a firekeeper. I tend to the flame and tend to thee. The lords have left their thrones and must be delivered to them. To this end, I am at thy side. Okay, so obviously we can talk to her to level up. Uh, we can talk to As her a little know, bit more. To be unkindled is to be a vessel for souls. Which we know. Sovereignless souls will become thy strength. I will show thee how. Ashen one, bring me souls plucked from their vessels. Okay. So before we do that, we obviously need to uh, crush the souls that we have, and uh, that will give us plenty of souls to level up. Before we do that, let's uh, let's talk to a few more people. Uh, here we have Hawkwood. Ah, he... another one roused from the sleep. Now Hawkwood is actually a deserter well, of the uh, the Farren undead, uh, the undead uh, army. Gives me You'll notice and it have us. he has. Oh no, no, he doesn't. Okay, I thought he had a uh, one of the the swords of the fair and the abyss watchers. True legend. Guess not. With the metal to link the fire, they're not fit to lick their boots. And we have another Don't judgment. Think? Kind of depressing. Doesn't sound like a very upbeat, motivated kind of guy. Let's uh, see if we can exhaust his dialogue. What a sick joke! Asking us to seek the Lords of Cinder and return them to their molding. Hey, dreams. man! I'm standing here in a loincloth, and you don't see me, hear me complaining. Those who <laughs> would link the fire. We're not fit to lick that. Yeah. All right. So he has nothing else to say. Um, Let's, uh, let's go back here and talk to this lady. Hello, lady. How are you? A pleasure to make thine acquaintance, Ashen One. The pleasure's all mine. I am but a humble handmaid of the shrine. Weapons, armor, trinkets, and spells. I've lots of little things to ease the burden of a weary traveler. And yes, I'm undead too, but not so charitable as to give my goods away. Ashen One, fetch souls and bring them to me. No. As is I want. No. What's interesting <laughs> is that uh, she actually looks like one of the old ladies from uh, Dark Souls 2. Uh, I don't know if she is or not, um, but it's also interesting to note that she has a 
uh, she has a covering over her eyes as well, uh, which is usually something that you see with fire keepers. Um, so we're not going to buy anything from her yet. But I, I wanted to come back and point out, uh, you can see, let's see if I can line this up here. See, you can see the fire keeper is wearing that crown that she placed on her head uh, during the opening cinematic. So it was definitely her in the beginning, donning, donning the crown with uh, the dark sign swirling inside. All right, and uh, hopefully most of you recognize this guy. Well, Andre. You I am Andre. I serve at this shrine as a humble smith forging weapons. You're in search of the Lords of Sindhu, I trust. I am. A toilsome journey, I wager. You require good arms. What's wrong Let with my me arms? Smith you weapons. Just kidding. <laughs> I am a smith. Such is my purpose. Alright, so what he can do is he can reinforce your weapons. Uh, a lot of you already know this. Uh, I, I keep saying that. Um, reinforcing uh, increases the uh, level of your weapons. Now, one thing you can do in this game, uh, if you're planning on doing any PvP, uh, raising your weapon abilities uh, without raising your leveling, uh, normally in the past was one way that you could go in and be a little OP when invading other people. Uh, but now I think they actually put caps on not just your level, but also on your uh, weapon leveling, um, capping you, or preventing you from invading people and being too OP, uh, and basically making their lives miserable. Um, this is a, kind of the equivalent to a twinking, if, if anyone's ever played uh, World of Warcraft. I uh, never really got into that game so much, but I did play it for a little while. Uh, my sister kind of dragged me into it. Um, but I remember definitely twinking uh, by leveling, basically, basically leveling up to a point where you could get really powerful armor and then transferring it over to other um, my other characters or your other characters or however, you know, if, if anyone else has done that, uh, so that you have really powerful weapons and armor on a much weaker character. Uh, and then, you know, than going into uh, PvP. All right, so real quick, uh, battery's getting a little low on my uh, on my laptop here, so. Plug it in real quick. Alright, so reinforcing, yes. Lay it levels up your weapons. Uh, infusing weapons is which, where you would infuse it with uh, fire gem, lightning gem, uh, dark gem, deep gem, uh, hollow gem, heavy, uh, raw, uh, basically any kind of gem you can find. Now, you can only do certain ones at, at any given time until you bring Andre Cole that allows you to uh, infuse with other types of gems. So right off the bat, uh, I think we can only do refined gems, raw gems, and fire gems. Now, refined gems are interesting because what they do is they raise the, they'll actually lower the power of the weapon a little bit, but they scale a little bit more to your abilities. So in this case, uh, with the club, uh, it would raise the scaling on uh, on my dexterity, uh, which in this case doesn't really matter because we're not doing a dex build. Um, sometimes you'll see that it doesn't actually change anything, but notice how on the dex there is no scaling and it adds scaling for dex. 
Uh, it keeps the same scaling for strength, but adds dexterity scaling. So that's interesting. Uh, the raw gem, what it does is it actually improves the power of your weapon or the physical attack of your weapon. Uh, so in this case, we would go from 108 plus 8 to 140. And as you, um, as you reinforce the weapon, that 140 will always go up, of course, but it no longer scales. So in this case, you'd get more physical attack power out of the weapon, but uh, the loss of the scaling would actually reduce uh, the attack power of the weapon. And in most cases that I've found, uh, you, especially if it's a weapon that has good scaling, uh, C is decent scaling. Uh, B is good, uh, A is great, and S obviously is the best scaling you can get on a weapon. Uh, with a C scaling, uh, it might be worth actually going raw uh, with something like the club. Um, now, if it had, a, say, a B scaling on strength, then I would probably not go with the, uh, the raw gem. And then, of course, there is fire, uh, which we don't have a fire gem because we did not choose that. Um, fire elementals uh, gems will remove your scaling as well. Um, but they obviously add elemental damage. So in this case, you would go from 108 plus 8 to 97 physical as well as 97 fire. So even though you lose the scaling and you lose some physical attack, you're actually getting a lot more damage. You're getting almost 200 damage uh, combined between your physical and fire. And then also the fire, like I said, kind of makes enemies go into like this state where they're just like flailing around helplessly. Um, so that kind of adds a little bit of a bonus as far as getting you know free additional hits before they recover from that. So uh, we don't have any gems, obviously, and we're not going to be doing anything with the club anyway. So let's go ahead and uh, go on here. So repairing equipment, a lot of people wonder where repairing would ever come into play. Um, honestly, what people don't seem to understand is uh, basically whenever you go to a, a bonfire, your weapons automatically uh, regenerate. Uh, because your weapons can break if you go too long without repairing them. Uh, whenever you rest at a bonfire, it refills your Estus flasks as well as repairs your weapons. But it's a different repair system than this. What this is, is if your weapon breaks, if it completely breaks, and you go rest at a bonfire, it's not going to repair it. You have to come back to Andre to have him actually repair the weapon. That's why this menu is, option is here. And we can allot our Estus, and we're going to do that. Uh, this is You come to Andre to choose where you want to put your Estus Flask. Uh, so we're going to put it all into our regular HP Estus, rather than our Ashen Estus, because uh, we're not going to be... You'll still be able to use skills and uh, fate points, uh, it's just that once it's depleted we won't be able to re uh, refill it. Uh, but that's okay for now. Uh, I want to use as much of the Estus as possible. And then Reinforce Estus Flask is going to be used for, uh, you're going to find Estus Shards throughout the game, which uh, give you more Estus Flasks, so you got to come to Andre to uh, add those. Weapons and protection are sturdy enough by and large, but when overused, they'll eventually break. When their durability is low, repair becomes a necessity. Use a powder or simply rest at a bonfire. But should chance impel them break, bring them me. I'll hammer them back into shape. They take no pleasure in breaking, I assure ye. So handle them with care if you... We take no pleasure in breaking them. Uh, nobody wants a broken weapon, like the sword that I'm carrying. <laughs> um, I, I know I'm explaining a lot of things. It's early in the game. Uh, I. I just want to kind of explain things for people who don't know. Uh, hopefully, uh, anyone who has played the game or wants to see more of the game um, isn't getting bored from the explanation. Uh, Could they be careful? It's it's only you know the first couple episodes. I'm just kind of going through some of this stuff. So uh, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and crush some souls. Uh, so in this one we have five. So we're going to use selected. Five. 
Alright, that gave us 250. That's 200 for the one. And then this is our, our sovereignless soul, soul of a nameless soldier. Two thousand. That puts us at six thousand eighty. I mean, that's not too bad for starting off. That gives us a lot of leeway as far as what we're gonna what we're gonna build up on our character. And then I'm gonna sell that crappy broken sword. Oh, we got three of them. The oh no, sorry, three. We get three souls for it. You can see how worthless it is. Um, all right. And actually, let's... Un uh, I'm going to keep the wood shield uh, simply just for shits and giggles. Um, but uh, we are going to switch that to the east-west shield. And then I think... Um, I don't think she sells anything that I want just yet. Let's see. She might... I think she has chain armor that I can use. Um... Let's see, a scimitar, short sword, dagger. Um, yeah, she doesn't have anything that I really want, uh, but I do need some armor, uh, so it would probably be a good idea to buy some armor. So, I'm trying to remember if there's any way that I'm going to find any armor. I don't think there is. You know what? I'm not going to buy armor just yet. I'm gonna level up first. I've produced the coiled sword. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To Lothric, oh. where the homes of the lords converge. Uh, basically, she was telling us uh, to put this, the coiled sword in the bonfire, and that way we can use that to get to Lothric. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> play this game and come here and then don't know where to go from here, uh, not realizing that they need to warp to the first location. Very well. Then touch the darkness within me. Oh, Take well, nourishment from touch these the sovereign you, huh? souls. Alright. Alright, so let's focus on... Uh, I'm going to do strength, obviously. Endurance. Uh, vigor is going to be another one that I'm going to build up. Uh, vitality is important as well, because that will allow us to carry or equip um, heavier items. Uh, I try not to put too much into vigor uh, overall, uh, even in the beginning. The reason being, uh, if you notice, as I raise the vigor, uh, in the beginning, the, the first level doesn't give me any physical defense. Uh, it, it starts giving me defense as I go up, but notice if I, if I put it all into vigor, let's see, we go to 85, but if I go into strength, then not only do I get more defense, but I'm also raising my attack power uh, by quite a bit. So I try not to put too much into Vigor right off the bat. I will eventually, uh, just not right now. Um, but I want to distribute this a little evenly throughout uh, Endurance and Strength. And then I think that'll be good for now. Um, so that way we'll be able to get some heavy hits on enemies and still have enough Endurance to keep swinging. Uh, if you have a strength build with high endurance, I mean, you are, with the right weapon, you can be unstoppable because you could just keep swinging and staggering and swinging and getting enemies or players and basically stun locking them and doing heavy damage with each hit and not getting tired from your swings. So, let's go ahead and do that and then. Farewell, Ashen One. Farewell, Firekeeper. Uh, oop, embed the coiled sword. Alright. Go ahead and rest the bonfire. We have a couple things here. We can attune spells. Uh, basically, you have to do this at a bonfire if you're going to use spells. Uh, you use attunement uh, in your stats to increase the number of uh, spells you can equip at any time. Uh, right now I have uh, one attunement slot, um, but I don't have any spells obviously, so can't equip anything. 
You can organize your storage box. I don't think I've ever gone into my storage box for anything. Um, probably would be a good idea when you get a lot of weapons uh, and armor. Uh, I don't bother. Um, and anytime you pick items up that are above and beyond what you can carry, they automatically go to your storage box. Uh, then you have to burn an undead bone shard. Uh, doing that, uh, when you find undead bone shards and you burn them at the bonfire, and you have to do it at this bonfire, uh, it actually increases the effectiveness of your Estus flask. So make sure that whenever you find one of those, that you that you do so. Actually, I just remembered before we go anywhere. There is an area up here that normally you can't get to until you buy a key from uh, from the vendor lady. And uh, actually, first we will look at it. So this is a, a giant tree. Um, it looks like the giants from previous souls, uh, as, as some people will recognize. Uh, now, when you examine it, it says that a, a seed of a giant tree is yet to fall. Uh, so. Right now, there's nothing we can get from it, but later on, we will be able to. Oh, that's right, and there's some more souls. Might be able to go up another level. Um, what I want to do is I want to get up on this roof. And uh, normally you have to purchase a key from the, uh, from the vendor lady uh, that opens this gate and lets you up into that tower area. And, uh, you know, you can drop this ladder here and climb up on the uh, roof at your leisure. At your leisure. Um, but we're going to do this. Oh, all right. Now, I have never gotten it on my first try, but uh, and definitely not getting it on my second try. But basically, if you run at the tree, you hit it at the right angle, and you jump at the right time. Oh, <laughs> I got the height, but uh, I jumped straight up. And basically, you want to hit the tree and then jump off to the side. This almost makes me about as nervous as fighting a boss sometimes. Because <laughs> I'm like, I'm so close! I've almost got it! Oh, man. That one was, that one was close. Uh, and there's a reason I want to do this, and you will see. Oh, man. Let's, um... Uh, Let's get rid of the shield and the club. I don't know if that's going to do anything, but it makes me feel like I'm lighter. Oh, that was my closest one. I will, I promise, if this takes too long, I will cut it out. Do the magic of editing. Dang. Right, I can do this. It, somebody might be able to do this on their first try. I cannot. It's, uh, it's tough. Oh, man, really? Wow, she didn't even barely jump on that one. Come on, girl. You got this. You don't need dexterity for this. Oh, wow, what is going on? Ah, oh, man. So close. I can do this! I can do this! I swear! I'm gonna use up all our remaining time doing this. But it's worth it, I promise you. Uh, I didn't even get up the tree trunk on that one. Oh, that's gonna hurt. No, not very much. Alright. I might have to cut some of this out of the video. There we go. All right. Made it. I, I told you. I told you I could do it. All right. Homeward Boone. Homeward Boone. All right. One thing we could do, if we really wanted to, if we wanted to kill the, uh, the uh, Swordmaster, we, and we'll probably do it later on um, when we get a bow. Uh, with, and buy some arrows. Uh, you can just stand up here and shoot him. And uh, makes it definitely makes it a lot easier. Um, 
Um, we're not going to do that right now because I don't have a bow and I don't have arrows. I have fire bombs, but that's not enough. All right, so we are above the fire lake shrine. You can see somebody's phantom running around down there. That is really high up. Now, I think personally that what I just did by jumping up the tree, they put that tree there for a reason. And they put it at an angle for a reason. And they made it so you could, I think they made it so that you can do that. Uh, I don't think that it's cheating. I don't think it's cheesing. I don't think it's, you know, I, I, I think it's something that they put there so that you can do this early in the game without the key. Um, the other reason I think that is because straight ahead of me, uh, you will maybe recognize this. Okay, so that is the bird from uh, previous Souls games, uh, where you drop items and he'll exchange those items for other, other more valuable items. Um, his nest is actually on the roof. It's above that. Uh, this is not the nest. This is just stuff that fell from the nest. But when you get up on top of the roof... Oh, okay. All right. Okay, okay. Yeah. Mimi Pickle Pea. It, we'll give you some Pickle Pea. Just hold on. Um, when you get on the roof using the key, which costs 20,000 souls, uh, you can get to the nest on the top of the roof. Now, in my opinion, if they meant for you to only be able to get up there with the key, they would not have made it so you can access the bird down here as well. Um, we can... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, me, pump a rum. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, we're gonna drop a couple items here. Let's see, uh, or at least one item. Uh, what we're gonna put down is a uh, firebomb. Uh, make sure you leave it, not discard it. He likes that. Um, I'm not sure what pumperum is. Uh, at first I thought it was explosives, but uh, it's not. Uh, I put other things down, and he's called them Pumperum. So he gave us a large Titanite shard. Uh, let's see. Let's, uh, I can't remember if a Homeward Bone is something he takes. Let's see. Yep. Alright, so we got a gesture from that. As well as Iron Bracelet. I don't think we have anything else. Uh, we got Ember. And, and you saw that we picked up the Estes Shard, which we'll, we will go to Andre with. Um, yeah, I don't have anything else that I can use at the moment. Um, and then here we have our first illusory wall. This is one of the main reasons I wanted to do this. Over here, we have a chest. It's not a mimic, so don't worry. It's the Covetous Silver Serpent Ring. Alright. A silver ring depicting a snake that could have been, but never was, a dragon. Fallen foes yield more souls. Snakes are known as creatures of great avarice, devouring prey even larger than themselves by swallowing them whole. If one's shackles are cause for discontent, perhaps it is time for some old-fashioned greed. So, this is going to give us more souls for each enemy we kill. That's huge, in my opinion. Alright. Head back, back on down here. Let's actually uh, crush that soul that we picked up. Check with her again, because there are some oh, things how may I be that might be worth. Oh, no, not sell. Sorry, bye. 
Um, I know you can drop uh, prism stones um, as well with the bird, but um, I'm not going to do that right now. Uh, main reason being I don't want to have to try and jump to get up there again right now um, and bore you guys with that. Uh, maybe do that in another video. Um, also, we should probably get a torch, uh, but we don't need that right now either. Uh, we'll get that later. So, I think we're good. All right, so let's go ahead and last thing we're going to do is talk to this guy up here. Hello. Yes, we are. And a seeker of lords. Yes, we are. I am Ludlith of Corland. Look not in bewilderment as I say. I linked the fire long ago. He was a Lord of Cinder, or is a Lord of Cinder. If substantiation be thy want, set thine eyes upon my charred corpse. This sad cadaver. Get out of the way. No need to be coy. Have a closer look. You like that? He says, have a closer look, and then he does the little, uh, the coy little, uh, gesture there with the hands under the chin like he's posing for a portrait. <laughs> That's so cute. Aww, the cute little guy. Alright, uh, so it's exhausted. No star of our purpose. Five thrones will take five lords as kindling for the linking of the fire. The lords are kindling. The fast fading flame must be licked to preserve this world. A reenactment of the first linking of the fire. So it is. I became Lord of Cinder. I may be but small, but I will die a colossus. So he will die a colossus. He. He's going to help us link the flame, along with all the other Lords of Cinder. The only difference is he did not abandon his throne. Um, I don't know if we'll find, maybe we'll find something later on that will give us a little bit more lore about him. Um, but uh, he will definitely be helpful throughout the throughout the rest of the game. Let's just check. No style. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. So it we, we know of our purpose, and you'll die a Colossus. All right. Now, now. Do not be away over long. I won't. Trust me. I'll be back. All right, so uh, we are at the end of our time here, and uh, we're going to hang out and party with the Firekeeper a little bit, and, uh, and then we'll be back for more. Uh... We'll be back in the next episode and head on over to uh, Lothric and uh, maybe kill a few things, hopefully not die uh, running around in our loincloth. And uh, we will uh, catch you guys on the flip side. All right. Take it easy.